In Spanish, the present tense is used to talk about facts or general truths, to talk about things that we do on a daily basis, or to talk about what we're doing right now. In this video, we're gonna go over irregular verbs and stem-changing verbs in the present tense, and then give you the examples and the explanations you need to begin to start speaking immediately. Now, if you don't know how to use regular verbs in the present tense, I want you to go watch this video first, and then come back to this video afterwards. But by the end of this lesson, you'll be able to confidently conjugate and use irregular and stem-changing verbs in the present tense and really understand and see how they're different from regular verbs. But before we start, don't forget, please like this video, subscribe to our channel, ring the bell so you don't miss any other Spanish lessons, and thank you for all the people that supported us on Buy Us A Coffee this week. We really appreciate you. Now, what exactly is an irregular verb? An irregular verb is simply a verb that does not follow normal conjugation patterns. So it's a verb that's either gonna change its ending, it's gonna change its stem, or sometimes it'll change both. But since irregular verbs are so common in Spanish, we need to try to learn them and then group them into categories whenever we find similar patterns. For one, this makes the learning process much easier, but secondly, and more importantly, with practice, you'll actually begin to see these patterns whenever you learn a new verb. To begin with, if we're just talking about irregular verbs that change their ending, so not stem-changing verbs, the easiest ones to start with are ones that are only irregular in the yo form, and they're actually regular in all their other forms. These are verbs like hacer. If this verb were regular, we would conjugate it aso in the yo form, but the irregularity is that the C is going to change to a G, and we're going to get ago. But all the other forms of hacer stay the same, so you'll still have tu haces, el, ella, o usted hace. Nosotros hacemos, vosotros hacéis, ellas, ellas, o ustedes hacen. So, for example, yo hago ejercicio todos los días. I exercise every day. But in another form, it would be regular, like ella hace ejercicio todos los días. She exercises every day. Let's see another one. The verb poner. If we were to conjugate it regularly, it would be yo pono. But in this case, the yo form will change from an N to an NG, so we'll get yo pongo. But all the rest of the forms are going to stay the same. You'll have tú pones. Él, ella o usted pone. Nosotros ponemos. Vosotros ponéis. And ellos, ellas o ustedes ponen. So for example, yo pongo la mesa antes de cenar. I set the table before eating dinner. But with any other form, it's going to be regular, like Ustedes ponen la mesa antes de cenar. You all set the table before eating dinner. So for the rest of these examples, we won't go into so much detail, but you get the idea. There's some small irregular change to the ending to each of the verbs in the yo form, and all of the other forms are actually conjugated regularly. So a verb like salir will be yo salgo. So for example, yo salgo temprano para evitar el tráfico. I leave early to avoid traffic. But any of the other forms will be regular. So like nosotros salimos temprano para evitar el tráfico. We leave early to avoid the traffic. Next we have traer, which is going to be yo traigo. So we'll have yo traigo los documentos al jefe. I bring the documents to the boss. Everything else is going to be regular. So let's do vosotros traes los documentos al jefe. You all bring the documents to the boss. Our next verb, saber, is going to change to yo sé. So we could use, for example, yo sé la respuesta correcta. I know the correct answer. But it'll be normal in every other form. For example, ella sabe la respuesta correcta. She knows the correct answer. And one more like this, we'll do ver. So it's going to be yo veo. For example, yo veo a mis amigos cada fin de semana. I see my friends every weekend. But the rest of them will just be regular. So for example, ustedes ven a sus amigos cada fin de semana. You all see your friends every weekend. 
Now, there are a variety of reasons why these endings need to change. Sometimes it's simply to preserve pronunciation. Other times they're for orthographic reasons. It doesn't really matter. We don't need to know. We just have to learn these kind of patterns. So whenever you have a verb that'll end in G-E-R or G-I-R, in the yo form, the G will change to a J. So for example, a verb like escoger will change to yo escojo, like yo escojo el mejor camino. I choose the best path. But it'll be regular in every other form, like el escoge el mejor camino. He chooses the best path. And with dirigir, we'll get yo dirijo. Yo dirijo el proyecto con cuidado. I direct the project carefully. But it'll be regular if we use another form like tú diriges el proyecto con cuidado. You direct the project carefully. And the last part of these endings that only change in the yo form is whenever a verb ends in c-e-r or c-i-r, the c will change to a z-c. So this will happen with verbs like conocer. We'll get yo conozco. For example, yo conozco a muchas personas en la ciudad. I know a lot of people in the city, but all the other forms will be the same. So we'll have nosotros conocemos a muchas personas en la ciudad. We know a lot of people in the city. And a verb like traducir will change to yo traduzco. For example, yo traduzco textos del inglés al español. I translate texts from English to Spanish but it'll be regular in all the other forms. So we would have something like, ellos traducen textos del inglés al español. They translate texts from English to Spanish. Now, if you feel that that section was overwhelming and difficult, just remember to take your time because it is tough at first, but you'll begin to see these patterns and it'll become much easier, especially because you only have to learn the irregularity in the yo form. Every other form conjugates regularly. Now, let's talk about stem changing verbs or sometimes they're called boot verbs. So these verbs undergo a vowel change in the stem in every form except the nosotros and the vosotros form. And for that reason, they're called boot verbs because if you draw a line like this, it actually looks like a boot. And there are three main types. The first is going to be a stem change from E to IE. Now, we'll use pensar for our first example. What this means is that you're not going to conjugate like yo penso. You're going to change the E to an IE. So it'll be yo pienso. Tu piensas. El, ella, o usted piensa but it won't change in the nosotros and vosotros, so we'll get nosotros pensamos, vosotros pensáis, and then it changes again for ellos, ellas, o ustedes piensen. And you can see here, it looks like a boot. So as an example, we could say, yo pienso que es importante estudiar. I think that it's important to study. Another example of this is the verb querer. So we won't say yo quiero, the E will change to an IE, so we'll get yo quiero, tú quieres, él, ella, usted quiere, nosotros queremos, vosotros queréis, and ellos, ellas, o ustedes quieren. And as an example, we could say something like, tú quieres aprender español. You want to learn Spanish. Now our second stem change is going to be changing from O to UE. And a good example of this is the verb dormir. So we won't say yo dormo, the O is going to change to UE. So we're going to get yo duermo, tú duermes, él, ella, usted duerme, nosotros dormimos, vosotros dormís, él, ella, ustedes duermen. See? It always looks like a boot. An example can be yo duermo ocho horas cada noche. I sleep eight hours a night. Another great stem changing irregular verb to learn like this is poder. So it won't be yo puedo, but the O changes to UE and we'll get yo puedo. Tú puedes. Él, ella, usted puede. Nosotros podemos. Vosotros podéis. And ellos, ellas, o ustedes puedan. So nosotros podemos hablar tres idiomas. 
we can speak three languages. And our last category is when we have a stem change that changes from E to I. So a great example of this one is gonna be pedir. So we won't say something like yo pedo, and be careful with that one because pedo in Espanol actually means fart. It's gonna be yo pido, tu pides, el, ella, usted pide. Nosotros pedimos, vosotros pedís, ellos, ellas, ustedes piden. So for example, tu pides ayuda cuando la necesitas. You ask for help when you need it. Another great verb for this one is servir. So we wouldn't say servo, we're gonna say sirvo. Okay, so yo sirvo, tu sirves, él, ella, usted sirve, nosotros servimos, vosotros servís, ellos, ellas, ustedes sirven. So, for example, él sirve la comida a las seis. He serves the food at six. Okay, next up, we're gonna go through verbs that are irregular in all forms. So, these are gonna be verbs like ser. So, we just simply have to learn the conjugation pattern that we're gonna do yo soy, tu eres, el, ella, usted es, nosotros somos, vosotros sois, and ellos, ellas, ustedes son. So, for example, yo soy estudiante de medicina. I'm a medical student. There's really nothing we can do about this group. It's just irregular and we have to learn it. But all is not lost with these verbs. Even though they are irregular in every form, they do sort of follow a pattern within their irregularity, if that makes sense. So verbs like estar are gonna be yo estoy, tú estás, él, ella, usted está, nosotros estamos, vosotros estáis, ellos, ellas, ustedes están. And a good example of that one could be um, ellas están en la biblioteca ahora. They are in the library right now. Our last verb in this category is going to be ir. So we're gonna get yo voy, tú vas, él, ella, usted va, nosotros vamos, vosotros vais, ellos, ellas, ustedes van. So for example, tú vas al gimnasio después de trabajar. You go to the gym after working. Now, although these verbs can seem difficult because they are irregular in every form, they do actually tend to follow a pattern amongst other conjugations. So when you get into learning these same verbs in the past tense or in the future tense, you'll see kind of their irregularity follows a pattern. So they're not quite as difficult. Now, however, our last group are completely irregular verbs. So these verbs have no regularity in any shape or form, in any of the tenses, in any of the forms. They're simply irregular and we must learn them. Now, the reason that these verbs are so irregular is because they'll have a lot of tricky aspects to them, like they'll actually be conjugated regularly in the nosotros and the vosotros form, but they'll have a certain change in the ending to the yo form, but at the same time, they'll have a stem change in all the other forms like our boot verbs. So for example, let's start out with decir. And we're gonna see that in this case, the nosotros and vosotros form is actually regular, but there's a stem changing. We have our boot verb form, but it also changes like our first category in the yo form from C to G, like hacer. So highly irregular, we're gonna have yo digo, tú dices, él, ella, usted dice, nosotros decimos, vosotros decís, and ellos, ellas, o ustedes dicen. And as an example, let's say, yo digo siempre la verdad. I always tell the truth. For our next one, we're gonna do tener. So here, just like we said before, the irregulators, you're gonna get yo tengo, but then tú tienes. Él, ella, o usted tiene. Nosotros tenemos. Vosotros tenéis. And ellos, ellas, ustedes tienen. So you see our ending change in the yo form and the stem change throughout, but nosotros and vosotros are gonna be regular. So for example, we could say, Él tiene tres hermanos. He has three brothers. And our third one in this case is gonna be the verb venir. So we'll have yo vengo, tú vienes, él, ella o usted viene, nosotros venimos, vosotros venís, and ellos, ellas, ustedes vienen. And an example could be something like, ustedes viene a mi casa. 
you all come to my house. So when studying more complicated Spanish topics like irregulars or something like stem changing verbs and conjugations, my advice is to always learn one thing and do your best to sort of master it before moving on to the next. A great example is something like if you're learning stem changing verbs, learn the stem change E to I. Practice with a couple verbs, make sure that you're able to use it pretty well in normal, real conversations before going on to try to learn other verbs that change their stem from O to U, E. Because when we try to learn too much at once, we tend to not learn anything very well at all. It's best to keep it simple. As always, if you like this video, please give it a like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, ring the bell so you don't miss any other Spanish lessons. Also, please consider donating to the channel through Buy Me A Coffee, as it really is the best way to help support us to make more content like this for you. As always, we thank you so much. Until next time.